Hey friends, and welcome back to more Reddit stories about entitled people, Karens, and everything in between. Hope you're all doing awesome today, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and we're getting right into today's Reddit posts. Dealership pulled bait and switch. It costs them over 50k. The city I live in has extremely inflated vehicle values compared to the surrounding areas. If you buy the same car from a neighboring state, you can often save three to four thousand dollars without really trying. When I buy a new vehicle, which happens every three to four years, I always look in the surrounding states to compare pricing. The story happened about five years ago, and the malicious compliance is still ongoing to this day. I was shopping for a new car, brand new, and found one that matched my specs about 12 hours away in a neighboring state. It was priced about $5,000 below comps. After looking up flights, there was a one-way direct flight that took me to their local airport for around $175. Plus the gas to drive back, I was looking at a total of maybe $275 to save $5,000. Absolutely worth it in this situation. I reached out to the dealership, negotiated a bit, and agreed on a price. I let them know that I would be flying in to pick up the car, and offered to pay in full in advance of the flight. They told me that all they needed was a 1k deposit, and that the car was considered mine. We signed a contract and I paid the deposit, and then I booked the flight for three days from then first sign of things gone awry. When I showed up at the airport, the dealership was supposed to pick me up. This had been arranged in advance. A quick phone call later and I grabbed an Uber to take me the 20 miles to the dealership, with the promise of them covering that cost. No big deal either way. Second sign of things gone awry. When I showed up at the dealership, the salesman I had been speaking with asked me if I wanted to walk the lot with him to look at a few cars. Yes, cars, plural. Questioning what he meant by that, we walked into the lot to see these cars that he was talking about. Were these some special type of gold inlaid, full self-driving, full self-flying mobiles? No, they were not. When I point blank asked to see the car that I was buying, the one with VIN XYZ listed in the signed contract with the deposit on it, I was told it was no longer available. The salesman offered to show me similar cars, which would have been fine if we were able to come to similar terms on pricing, but all of these cars were outrageously priced. Think 2k over MSRP, instead of 5k under MSRP. Important note for later, there was never a mention or any paperwork, signage, etc. of any incentives for giving 5-star reviews. Fast forward 2-3 to three hours, I am now convinced this dealership never had this specific car on the lot, and that this was 100% a bait-and-switch gone wrong. The dealership was unwilling to sell me a similar vehicle at a similar price to our negotiated one. We were over 5k apart, and were unwilling to pay the flight costs for this bait and switch scenario. A heated discussion ensued between myself and the GM, where he told me to quote, go ahead and leave a bad review, but that I wasn't getting any free money from him. I took an Uber to a nearby hotel and booked a flight back home for the next day. Total cost? Around 750. Q malicious compliance. This dealership had an average Google rating of right around 4.5 stars and around 400 total reviews. Pretty solid for a dealership. That night while I was sitting in the hotel room, I had some time to burn. I spent a couple of hours creating new email accounts just so that I could leave multiple reviews for this dealership. All said and done, I had left around 20 one-star reviews over the course of that night and then sort of stopped caring about the reviews. At this point, my focus shifted to recovering my lost travel expenses. A few days after getting back, I sent the dealership a demand letter for $750, which they promptly ignored. Since we had done the original contract with the deposit in both states, I was allowed to file a small claim suit in my state, which I did. The dealership never showed up to court, and I received a default judgment for $750. I did collect that, by the way. It took a few certified letters, a few phone calls, and about a year, but I did get a check for $750. As you can imagine, I was still not a happy camper. What they had done was wrong on so many levels. All of my friends knew the story of how I was bait and switched, and the fact that I flew to the dealership on a one-way ticket only made it that much worse. They had all left a bad review or two, but nothing more than a normal mad customer. Q malicious compliance long term. I don't know how it started, or how it ended up lasting as long as it has, but at some point I had some time on my hands and left a bad review for this dealership. Just one. Not two, not three. One. 
In doing so, I noticed that all of the reviews I had left right after leaving the dealership were gone, probably taken down for being fake, or because I'd left so many at the same time and the dealership reported them. I wanted to make sure this dealership wouldn't do this to someone else, so the next day I checked to make sure that one bad review I had just left was still there. It was, and since I was thinking about it, I went ahead and created another account and left another one-star review. Fast forward two to three years, it has now become a habit. Every time I have a few minutes to spare, I create a new account and leave a one-star review for this dealership. Their current rating? 1.9 stars with nearly 3,500 total reviews. I am personally responsible for at least half of those reviews. When you open the dealer's website, one of the large banners that flashes across the screen advertises $50 for a 5-star review. Something about showing the review to your salesman to get a $50 Visa gift card. It has been this way since about a year after this bait-and-switch occurred, right around the time the 1-star reviews began to accumulate. Assuming I am responsible for half of their reviews, and the fact that the dealership only has 3,500 total reviews, they have paid $50 per review for at least 1,000 reviews, likely more than that, meaning they have implemented a policy to pay for reviews, have spent 50 k doing so, and have seen their average rating drop consistently since telling me to go ahead and leave a bad review. My neighbor, Karen. So yesterday morning I'm outside on my porch, watering my plants, drinking my coffee, enjoying the beautiful day, and waiting on an Instacart delivery. My new neighbor pulls up and parks diagonally across my driveway, a recurring issue for some unknown reason. My niece is diabetic with only 40% kidney function. Last week when she blocked all access to my driveway, paramedics had to beat on her door for 10 minutes to move her car out of the way so they could take my niece to the hospital after she had a severe grand mal seizure, and then had the nerve to berate the paramedics because, oh, there was plenty of room for you to carry that thing around my car. Now keep in mind that her driveway is made for two cars, and at that moment completely empty. As she exited her vehicle, I asked her to please not block my driveway, as I was expecting a grocery delivery. Karen replies, You don't even have a car, I just need to change my outfit. I told her again that I'm expecting a delivery of groceries and the driver is almost here. I have a large order with several heavy items, and informed her that she has an empty driveway in which to park her car. She screamed, Oh my god, I spilled my Starbucks on my shirt and I need to change. Don't be rude, you b****. She then proceeds to walk to her house and leaves her car windows down across my entire driveway. Okay, Karen, I ask nicely. My Instacart shopper, my favorite shopper that's become a friend, pulls up, and I asked her if she minded waiting in her car for just a moment so I could clear the driveway. I picked up the water hose and began to water my garden, which just happens to be located on either side of my driveway. I made long sweeping strokes of water with the hose, Karen runs outside, still in the same totally ruined outfit, and starts screaming, My windows are down, you bitch. You're ruining my car. She scrambles into her car to move it, and I'm still spraying. My shopper pulls into my driveway, laughing. As we're unloading groceries, here comes Karen, and she is in true Karen righteous anger mode. How dare you? That was so rude. You destroyed my car, now I'm late for work, and it's all your fault. She turns to my shopper and screams, who makes deliveries this early? This is just a plot to ruin my life. There's no way you would be delivering groceries at 9am. I'm calling your company and having you fired for harassment. She turns back to me and screams, You don't even have a car, you don't even use your driveway. Why do you care if I park in it? Plants looked super thirsty again right then, so I picked up the hose and informed Karen that I'm about to water my garden and to please move. She screams, don't you dare turn on that water, don't you dare attack me. I again say, Karen, you have two options here. You can either move your ass off my property, or you can stand there while I water my garden and you get wet. Your choice. She then steps into my garden and says, Go ahead, I dare you. Turn that hose on, bitch. Okay, Karen. I turn the hose on. She lost it. Screeching, screaming that I'm assaulting her and that she's calling the cops and pressing charges. She screams at Julie, my shopper, to get the hell out of her neighborhood before she gets charges, too. Julie, bless her, says, Lady, I was ready to leave ten minutes ago, but now I'm staying put so you don't harass my customer and I want to talk to the cops if you're calling them. 
Karen whips out her cell phone and calls 911. I invite Julie to have a cup of coffee while we wait. Police response time in this town is fast, and within 10 minutes, I've got two city cops in my driveway. Karen begins her hysterical, I was assaulted, you need to arrest her, I feared for my life, BS. The second officer comes on the porch to talk to me and Julie. We explain what happened. The cop actually laughed out loud. Uh-oh, Karen heard him. Now she's yelling at both officers. I want your badge numbers, this is ridiculous. You aren't arresting her because I'm white. My rights are being violated. I'm white, Julie is white, both cops are white. The officer has had enough. He turns to me and asks, Have you asked her to leave your property? Why yes, officer, repeatedly. He then turns to Karen and informs her that she needs to leave my property before he arrests her for trespassing. Cue the waterworks from Karen. The officer isn't falling for it. Cue righteous Karen anger. She steps off my property into the street and starts screaming that she's going to, quote, contact the chief of police that is a very dear friend and have his badge before noon. The officer looks over at her car, parked on the street now, smiles, takes out his ticket pad, and requests her license, registration, and proof of insurance. Karen is now purple with anger. Oh, you're giving me a ticket? For what? I am a legal United States citizen. You can't ticket me for having an opinion. The officer says, I'm not ticketing you for your opinion. I'm ticketing you for dead tags and blocking access to a fire hydrant. I need your license, registration, and proof of insurance. Now. Karen, now in a full meltdown of tears, hands him her license and registration. He requests the proof of insurance again. She then admits she doesn't have insurance on her car. The officer writes her a ticket for dead tags and no insurance. She is losing her crap at this point, but goes towards her car to move it to her driveway, screaming, You're getting fired today. Good luck finding another job. However, the officer informs her that she cannot legally drive the vehicle without insurance and calls for a tow truck. Julie and I laughed so hard we damn near choked on our coffee. So Karen is screaming that this is favoritism and injustice and racism against white women. At this point, the other cop loses his crap. He tells Karen she's got a choice. Shut up or be arrested for creating a public disturbance and possibly a mental hygiene warrant. Tow truck arrives and hooks up her car. Karen now starts screaming at the tow operator that what he's doing is, quote, Communism. You're a communist. The officers both tell her to get her ass in her house before they arrest her for interfering with police duties. Karen goes towards her home while crying that she's suing me for property damage, assault, missed wages, and trauma. She's suing the police department, she's suing Instacart. The officer looks at me, hands me his card, and tells me to contact him if I end up in civil court so he can be a witness for me. I'm pretty sure the sound that came out of Karen's mouth right then is what a nuclear explosion sounds like, before she calls her husband, crying that she's being victimized by the police, and he needs to come home now. Right before I began writing this, Karen's husband knocked on my door to apologize for his wife's behavior. You're a good neighbor and I'm really sorry you've been dealing with her hysterics. She's got mental health issues and refuses counseling or treatment. I don't know what to do with her anymore. We had to move from our last neighborhood because she just can't accept that she can't control everyone. We're not suing you. I told her that I'll leave her if she files any lawsuit. I've told her it all could have been avoided if she would just stop being a bitch. I'm sorry she acted that way and it will not happen again. The entire time he's on my porch, Karen is on their porch screeching at him that she's going to file for divorce on grounds of mental cruelty and she's taking everything he owns. This is wife abuse, Jim. A husband has to support his wife, Jim. You're a traitor to me and to our country, Jim. I volunteer at the local battered partner shelter and gave Jim some pamphlets on domestic abuse, living with a partner with mental illness, and the business card of the attorney that helps our clients with obtaining a divorce. Poor Jim. I can still hear her over there screaming at him. He's sitting on their porch just looking defeated. She's mainly inside but comes out when she really wants to make a point about him. Poor Jim. Anyway guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So have an awesome day, take care, and I'll see you next time.